Welcome back to the Backroads Podcast, where we will talk about the adventure within the adventure of Pat and Ashley's road trip across the valley and beyond. I'm Andrew, and they need no introduction, but they are the dynamic duo, the celebrities of TVA, our very own Grace and Frankie, Pat and Ashley. Woo! Oh my gosh. I'm honored to be compared to Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda. Oh, I absolutely. I love Grace and Frankie so much. I yeah. do feel like that'd be very much. I feel like I'm definitely the Jane Fonda. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so <laughs> in this case. Yeah. 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 You've got, you've got her luscious hair, though. I do. Oh. <laughs> well, we just got back from beautiful Lynchburg, Tennessee. We had a really, really fun adventure there. We got to see some really awesome things. We got to eat some really good food. And it was meet some amazing people like we always do. Pat, what was your favorite part about Lynchburg? Well, you know, we were in Lynchburg, but we also went to Tullahoma. And I have to say, one of the favorite parts that I had was going to the Beechcraft Museum because, you know, not that I'm a huge airplane person, but the story there mm-hmm. about the planes and about this uh, aviatrix named... Uh, Louise Thaden mm-hmm. that I had not heard of. And uh, actually she flew at the same time of, as Amelia Earhart. And, you know, her story is just as amazing. And she flew for a lot, many, you know, many, many years. But uh, just learning about all that and seeing all those beautiful planes, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was a surprise to me that I, I mean, I really, really did enjoy that, that museum. It was really cool. And similar to Pat, I really I had never heard of Louise mm-hmm. Thaden or Olive Beach, who was the wife of the founder of the Beechcraft Airplane. Yeah. But it was really cool to hear their stories and to hear how they're highlighting these, you know, untold stories of these women in aviation long before that I would have thought that women were piloting planes. I mean, right. really, you just hear of Amelia Earhart. So right. it was really cool to hear about these women, you know, think, you know, from, from the South who were doing this around the same time that, you know, aren't as remarked on, aren't as remembered. So right. it's really cool that they're preserving their stories and that history. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a national history, American mm-hmm. history. And then, you know, Mr. Beach, who founded the country, passed away and, and the company went to Mrs. Beach. And I think many of the folks who worked at the company did not think that she would be able to run it. And, what a woman in business. I mean, she absolutely she ran that company, I think, until she she passed away. Mm-hmm. And so I think she was in her 90s. But, you know, just stories about strong women. I, you know, I didn't expect that. And it was it was certainly a treat to get to 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 learn that story and to also, you know, there was a an art deco trophy there that she oh. that Louise Thaden had won. Uh, and actually in a race, it was a cross continental race, I believe. And, um, she ended up winning the total prize purse and Amelia Earhart actually came in third and that, and you know, you just don't hear about that. And so again, that was, that was a highlight for me, an unexpected highlight, actually. Absolutely. What was your low light, Ashley? Yeah, I was about to say, we had so many highlights. I do have one small, very small, maybe the size of a quarter, eight-legged low light. <laughs> um, there was a spider in my room. <laughs> I think we could all hear you scream oh across the hotel. I I okay, was... I didn't scream. I did text Pat. <laughs> yes. I did text Pat, and she was so sweet. Pat was like, do you need me to come in? Do you need me to come take <laughs> care of it whatever and I was like no I got this I just need to know someone to know that that this is what got me if if I don't make it out of here but the craziest thing is this spider was like I don't know the terminator of spiders so like I finally get it it's somewhere I'm like looking for it in my room it's like hidden under my bed it finally makes its appearance out and I get it with my shoe I'm so sorry oh, to spider people take no, it out it made its choice <laughs> I made mine. So anyways, <laughs> I get it with my shoe. Again, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was in my home. But anyways, I hit it with my shoe and I go to get a tissue to get it back. I'm like, oh, I've, I've recovered. I've slain this beast. I go back to like pick it up. It's gone. 
<laughs> I'm like, I texted Pat. I'm like, I got it. And then I texted her back and I was like, it's gone. So then it's like hum- crawling around. And so I, I finish the job. We take care of it. I'm safe. I know you all were so concerned yes. for my safety, but. It was, I mean, the other wildlife that we got to interact with in Lynchburg was much more my speed. Absolutely. Um, can we talk about Tim's Ford? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We, it was a little rainy uh, during that part of our trip, but we got to go down um, with one of our biologists, Kevin Parr, and his yeah. team, and getting to see all of the different cool ways that they're studying, I mean, fish that are teeny tiny and all of these little creatures that they're that we check on and monitor regularly throughout the year because they're so important to telling us about the aquatic health of our rivers and lakes so it was really cool to kind of spend the morning with them kind of on the job yeah it was a beautiful beautiful location that we went to there it was off the elk river uh, I don't know exactly the spot. It was below a bridge or near yeah. a bridge. and Tim's Ford. Yeah, Tim's Ford. And the boulder darter, you know, oh, is yeah. what we talked about. Uh, but they were, there were all kinds of little darters. They were, um, I guess it's called seining, where they mm-hmm. oh yeah the and check and see. And they were explaining about the health of all that. And uh, I do have to interrupt before we get too far into the boulder daughter. Nobody asked me what my favorite moment was oh, from Lynch. Sorry. So what's your favorite? Uh, well, I am glad y'all asked <laughs> because my favorite moment was when y'all got to give our director, Will, a little taste of his own medicine. <laughs> if you guys want to take a look. Oh, <laughs> you tell him. One. That's so funny. <laughs> 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 you guys don't know how much they make us do these poses. It was, it was so good to get to do that. How funny is that? Like, like getting to watch that from afar. It was like finally, you guys get a little bit of revenge on Will. <laughs> It was hilarious because we have to say, you know, it's this is not buying Pat's day job. No, We're not trained no. actors, but you know, there's only so much of this you can give, and to have Will doing it under the Miss Main plane was just oh, that's yes, and oh, we love you, Will. You're a good you, sport. Will. Yes, we do love you, and of course, for those who don't know, he Will is from guy. Maine. Yes, and uh, and you know, there was a reference there to. His little homestay. Really? Yeah. Yes. Well, Andrew, we're such horrible coaches. I know. I was like, know. wait a Sorry. second. <laughs> such d- diva moments. But we can go back to environmental stewardship because we do yeah. it so well here at TVA. And oh. It was really know. cool to be part of that. See it like first person and, you know, our biologists and all the team that goes and works on these streams and monitors the health of the stream surveys. It, it's awesome to see. And we talk about the passion of our coworkers a lot, but we find that everywhere we go at TBA, they're very passionate about what they're doing. And it was really cool to see. Yeah. I mean, you know, you have some highly educated folks, you know, who have followed their passions through their studies and now they're out there, you know, on the ground, boots on the ground, getting to actually put into, you know, work what they've studied and, and really, you know, all of that, science background or, mm-hmm. or whatever it is, mm-hmm. be it engineering or wherever we are, you can really see, like you said, that passion comes through and that that conservation ethic, mm-hmm. you know, which really, again, I'm going to put on my history hat. It goes That's all good. the way back, <laughs> you know, back to, you know, the early 30s. TVA was to provide conservation and reforestation. Mm-hmm. And so you still see that today. And it, it's it, it's really amazing. Yeah, it's really interesting to think about, you know, some of these things that we're talking about that we're doing right now here at TVA. It's not really new for us. It may be newer technology. It may be newer innovations. It may look a little different, but it really does tie back into 
this is really like we've been here the whole mm-hmm. time for this reason. Yes. We've we've come here to make life better for the people of the Tennessee Valley. So like these different technology innovations or conservation efforts or recreation opportunities and economic development, mm-hmm. all of these different aspects come into play mm-hmm. and can come into just really making sure that we're putting the people who live here forward. Absolutely. Right. And right. it, it's it's really cool to talk about the history, right, Pat, yeah. where like our mission hasn't necessarily really changed we've just evolved with the times to achieve that mission absolutely yeah you know we've adapted and you know times change and like you said the technology changes but you're still doing some of the things you know that we did back in the 30s just a little differently so right um, and it's it's really such a treat to get to see that Mm -hmm. in action Mm -hmm. so yeah, and that stream survey, once again, was so much fun to get out there and wade in the water. Oh, yeah. man. And, cool uh, off for a little bit. Yeah, and uh, it was also another really funny moment that I loved was as I was filming Pat and Ashley in the stream, we see Ashley pick up a, a little crayfish. <laughs> I was like, oh, that that's cute. And the crayfish then falls out of Ashley's hand onto Miss Ezel. <laughs> Do you know that that happened? I, no. <laughs> I didn't know. You asked after you're like, what happened? I was like, nothing. Nothing to see there. <laughs> nothing. No. No, there well, wasn't. They were just with... little crayfish. They oh my little. gosh. But I, they were, I was like holding out, it was crawling on me. And I'm like, oh, this is such a fun moment. And then it just drops on you. And I just like look into the camera, just like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even I was notice. like, no one tell her. No one tell her. <laughs> it's our little secret until now. Oh, oh. man. It was. <laughs> It's so fun spending. I always like any of the times that we can go hang out with our biologists. I feel like Pat and I were talking in the car after just about, you know, if we could go back into school, like, would we ever do anything differently? Mm -hmm. And we were both talking about just how we've always been really fascinated by biology and just learning about the different fish and bugs and all the little things that live in our area and just how it all works together was really neat. Kevin did a really good job explaining about, you know, when, when you have something affect the water as simple as... Maybe there's a little bit more dirt in the water. Maybe mm-hmm. there's some erosion, how that can make it a little murkier, which affects the entire ecosystem. It can affect the smallest fish to, you know, the fish that we want to catch on our fishing poles. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So that was a really nice perspective to understand why it's up to all of us to really making to really make sure that we're taking care of that water, we're taking care of the land near the water, yeah. to make sure that those you know, aquatic species can continue to survive and we can continue to have the amazing biodiversity that we have here. Yeah. And, you know, you know who does a, we do a great job of environmental stewardship, but Jack Daniels, our next stop in Lynchburg, does a fantastic job as well. You know, what struck me about the visit to Jack Daniels Mm -hmm. um, was the the 99.99% of how they, uh, reuse or you know the renewables they have hardly any trash is what mm-hmm. i'm trying to say yeah and uh you know i thought that was a you know i had no idea yeah. how much of uh, reuse and how much thought they put into that and their processes for that i didn't know that but then when we after our tour we walked around lynchburg and we were downtown Every trash can mm-hmm. in that town and every trash can at Jack Daniels it's all barrels that mm-hmm. used to oh, have yeah. their whiskey in it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of repurposing and yes. reusing and things that allow them to achieve that 99.9. Yeah, that's incredible that they're focused on that because, I mean, it's a huge impact on the environment when you have an, a product. I mean, they ship out, gosh, hundreds of thousands yeah. of cases each yeah. year so that can create a lot so it's really nice to see a company that's being responsible and is making sure that they're doing their part to continue their legacy and making sure that the environment and planet are cleaner for future generations yeah and you know who doesn't like seeing all that bourbon get bottled too right oh man How cool i'm is sorry that? I believe it's whiskey. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack Daniels. I I am so sorry. Oh. I cannot believe you said that. <laughs> Bourbon is Kentucky, right? No. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. You're mixing it up. Uh, we gotta uh, take we gotta take you on a trip and gotta teach you. But it was really cool. Like you know, it, it all the work that goes into making that famous, famous, famous product is awesome. I mean, and it looks like they still really do it. 
how they used to do it back in the day. It doesn't yeah. look like a ton has changed, and that's what no. makes them so special. Yeah. I thought it was really neat. Uh, we got to chat with the uh, general manager, mm-hmm. Melvin, and he was you know, talking about the origins of Jack Daniels, which I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with. But one part of it that I wasn't familiar was just the origin. And you know, he was talking about how you know, he got a lot of help from this mm-hmm. man, Mr. Nearest. And uh, he was able to you know, kind of build this legacy off of that. But I thought that was really cool how they're giving credit to kind Absolutely. of the origins of this and the origins of Af- the African-American people mm-hmm. into Jack mm-hmm. Daniels and mm-hmm. how it's all a part of this unique history mm-hmm. and how they're preserving that. But it was also just really cool just to see the bottling down to, yeah. you know, everything. I mean, we got I to go into a making, barrel room. Yeah. Like we even saw how they made their charcoal. Right. Oh, yeah. Remember? And, you know, speaking of that, you know, Jack Daniels, for a little town in Tennessee and for the Tennessee Valley, people know. Mm-hmm. Jack Daniels worldwide. And remember, we ran oh, into yes. those folks. We uh, ran into some Glasgow. folks on our Glasgow. tour. And yeah, the woman was from Glasgow, Scotland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And her husband was from England. England. They came in for like the CMAs to Nashville. Yeah. And then they came down to Lynchburg for a tour. And it was really cool. I mean, it truly is a, a worldwide brand. And I know that um, when I went abroad, when I was younger, when people would ask where I was from, my sister and I would say we're from Tennessee. And mm-hmm. they'd be like, oh, Jack Daniels, yeah. Dolly Parton. I was like, <laughs> that's us. That's the one. But it, it was really cool to see, you know, this huge legacy here in Tennessee and to learn about the history, but also just to see just the environmental part, because that's something that, you know, yeah. you don't know about and you yeah. don't really necessarily think of would be important to them but it is very important to them and they're really really focused on environmental conservation i mean especially uh getting to preserving the original cave spring cave spring i started to say that's the whole that's where it starts that's where it starts that's that that special spring water yeah so it's really really neat to see how how what all they're doing over there and i'm sure that it's going to be even cooler things to come in the future yeah over there yeah absolutely and you know after that tour we did work up a little bit of a hunger and we got to go downtown lynchburg which mm-hmm. was really cool we got to visit the the lodge store there yeah i know and my cast iron isn't sitting out here. We believe you. We have, we're a multiple cast iron uh, family here. Yes, um, the Lodge cast iron store was a freaking dream. It was a like a chef's dream. Yeah, it was. It was really neat. We got to see their latest. Speaking of Dolly Parton, Parton. Mm-hmm. there they had some Dolly Parton pans there. Um, oh, my favorite. Yes. Oh yes, the uh, the skull cake pan or muffin pan <laughs> that you can actually. Uh, <laughs> And I made this yeah. at Halloween. I made uh, little corn muffins, and they came out just perfectly, like a little skull. Head. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness! If y'all didn't know, Pat's an amazing cook. Um, <laughs> she provides most of the snacks for our trip as well. <laughs> she does. <laughs> she really does. They're so good. But it was cool. I mean, the lodge is such a crucial part of Tennessee too, and. Not far from Chattanooga, oh, yeah. right? right. South just, yeah. just south of, of Chattanooga. And they have, and I'm still dying to go see it, the world's largest yes. cast iron pan. Yes. yes. We have heard tale that like two <laughs> yes. adult men can lay head to head <laughs> in the middle of the pit. And it's still bigger than them. Yes. So I, I got to see that. It's one. on the bucket list. Maybe yeah, it's season is. three. It is. I mean, yeah. 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 We'll do a road trip. Uh, it, it was, we had a lot of fun in Lynchburg and, you know, when we've been to Huntsville as well, right? And that, that, sh- that trip got cut a little short because of some dicey <laughs> oh, weather. Yeah, um, yeah. Just a, just a few tornadoes. Yeah, just a yeah, couple here yeah. and there, but we did have the opportunity to go back to Huntsville and kind of do a couple of things we didn't get to in the past. And in my opinion, one of my favorite moments from the entire trip was from that little reshoot down there <laughs> where I convinced Pat to talk about a William Faulkner quote on camera. Oh. Um, and we have a pretty cool behind the scenes of that. Y'all want to take a look at that real quick? <laughs> said, you can't swim to the horizons <laughs> until... You know what William Faulkner said, right? <laughs> you can't swim 
to new places, you leave until you have the courage. You can't swim to new horizons oh, yeah, oh, yeah. until you have the courage to lose sight of new horizons. <laughs> Get that courage to swim. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> William Faulkner said, said you can't swim to new horizons until you have the courage to lose sight of the shore. Well, that's beautiful, then. <laughs> that's beautiful. <laughs> See, we're a big team I here, right? I am. <laughs> oh my gosh. I could not remember that. Wait, Pat, what's the quote? <laughs> Jesus wept. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is, folks. William Faulkner once that said. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I'll, I'll raise my hand on that. That's my bad, Pat. <laughs> uh, I did write that toss. So uh... <laughs> Andrew is not part of the writing process normally, and we know that Ashley gets the long ones. Yes. 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 Indeed. yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Anything that's long or requires memorization, which all of us, it's so funny. I will say credit to Pat. She saw that quote maybe two minutes beforehand. And all of us could say it because we had zero pressure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Pat was thank, the only one with the pressure. You, will, for yes. your acting ability. <laughs> if you are planning a game night and need a charades partner, Director Will is your guy. Yeah. You know, Will is uh, catching some strays on this episode. We, once again, Will, we love you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we went from Huntsville all the way down to the Beechcraft Museum in Lynchburg. Yeah. And that was an awesome experience, too. They had some amazing planes. They had some amazing stories. And we got to learn some, like you teased a little bit earlier about some of those female pioneers that worked at the Beechcraft Museum. Mm -hmm. And Olive and Luis are one of them. And we also got to see a pretty cool picture of Olive and Louise. Oh, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> we talked about female pioneers and dynamic duos. Y'all are more like them than you think. Let's go ahead and take a look at that clip as well. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you Love is real. Andrew's flipping them away. So. Can you get the photo in there too? Oh, yeah, I got it. Now I'm talking about George. You're going to have to call back. Oh, my gosh. That picture is so. Can you do one? Look at. <laughs> do we not have it? That's my like standard quote. Like, I'm laughing all the time, and you're. Just... You know, listen, it's long days, but yeah, I feel like my quote of uh, every episode is, do we not have it? Do we have it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that picture of uh -oh. Mrs. Beach mm -hmm. and Louise Thayden, yeah. as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, that just looks like me and Pat. Because yeah. you've got just Louise just having the time for life, just <laughs> goofing around like Pat. And then it's just me over here, just over it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that is pretty much the way it is, especially at every the morning, end of the day. Every morning, Pat's like, good morning. And I'm like, <laughs> and at the end of the day, Pat's like, oh, this is great. Where do you want to go eat? And I'm like, <laughs> you go, go sit for an hour. Yeah. I mean, that was a hilarious moment. And we got to just see some awesome things there. Like, yeah. I was not expecting yeah. that. I it, The amount of planes they had on display was crazy. Oh, I couldn't get over it. And, and you know, they, the, the expo, well, one of the things was that Louise Thaden's aircraft license was signed by Orville Wright. It was an yes. original signature. That was uh -huh. so cool. Or, you know, I couldn't quite get over that. And, uh, and just the beaut the beauty mm -hmm. of those planes Oh, that um, red that a uh, lot of them were for the stagger wing. Yeah, the stagger wing. That like wing. cherry red that you just know yeah. at that time was the oh, plane. Yes. Yeah. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. You were, you really, like you want to fly planes I at do. some point. So I how do. was this for you? It was really cool as a wannabe aviation nerd. Uh, I have always wanted to fly. So it was really cool to see like kind of a progression of like aviation as a whole right like yeah. you saw beechcraft from where they started to where they are now yeah and it, it was just really cool and you know 
they have like a what appears to be a runway kind of like oh, yeah. mowed out. Yeah. And, they're flying. Yeah. and my first joke as soon as I saw Ashley was look. I talked to him. We're going to get you up in one of them. The open cockpit. We're going to be like Snoopy. We're going get, to get the glasses on. Uh, that joke didn't go over super well at first. It did not. So. It did not. I, listen, I am not afraid of flying, but the yeah, being in an open cockpit. Oh, oh. Gone. It would have been fun. See. No, that's where we would have put my rings on my right. hands and pushed, put a GoPro on Andrew's thing and had him pretend to be me. I don't think I could do that. I'm, I am no Louise Staden, that's right. for sure. And, and, you know, that was the th- the other thing. She flew in an open cockpit all the way across the country, which <laughs> crazy. You know, oh, thank you. it's just hard to imagine. Yeah, but it's really cool to learn. I mean, one of the planes that they had there that we learned about the stagger wing was made of wood and yes, linen. And fabric, yeah. And yeah, this wood fabric, fabric. material, so we got to see how that was made, made, but to learn that, you know, there was only a couple hundred made, but you know, I think 40 are still flying today. Yeah, so yeah. it's crazy that people are preserving this piece of aviation history. And as Pat was kind of saying earlier, how that really is a part of our American history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was really, really neat to learn about a piece of that again in Tullahoma, Tennessee, that's you, you, there's just so many places that we've gotten the opportunity to go do and see all over this area that maybe we wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to do so. So yeah, amazing. It certainly opened a lot of really cool doors for us and Lynchburg was amazing, but the runway is cleared and we are cleared for takeoff. (laughs) We are indeed heading to Bolton Green next time. Ooh. Bowling Green. You Should know what? Start there? our engines. Yeah, the Corvette Museum. Yes. Uh, Wait, what? I don't know. The motorcycle. <laughs> oh. Well, you. They can't see my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting a pedal. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, the Corvette Museum is going to be awesome. I, that's definitely a highlight for me. Yeah. I, that's Andrew. If, if you say that they can, that they'll let me do a test drive. Then oh, pedal to the metal! I am I am a drive to survive fan. Absolutely, that'll be in my passenger seat. <laughs> Pat will not. Pat will be gingerly going twenty five <laughs> miles an yes. hour. Yes. She'll use her. She'll be like, "Where's the blinker on this thing?" <laughs> and Ashley will be zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be fun, and we'll go to Paradise. As well. Paradise. We'll get to go to the new combined cycle oh, plant. Oh, that's exciting. Ooh. And meet all the cool people there. And yeah. Bowling Green is somewhere that I've never really been before, so I'm super excited to explore the city with y'all and get to see all the cool stuff that's coming up. Yeah, I'm really excited to be back in Kentucky. We had such a nice time last year we there did. seeing the Kentucky Dam and going to Miss yeah. Patty's. So oh, it's yeah. always uh, fun to head back into that western Kentucky area. Right. The bluegrass I- state. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Home to Tyler Childers. Shout out to Tyler Childers. Yeah, Tyler come Childers. On and also <laughs> come horses on in case you all want to go and visit some. Nope. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, no. No ponies either. <laughs> no, I don't want to ride a horse. That's terrifying. Well, on that horse note, randomly <laughs> enough, um, that wraps up this episode of Backroads. Thank you guys so much, as always, for taking time and listening to us. You can find us on all major podcast car- carriers and, of course, YouTube. We'll see y'all next time. 